Brian J.L. Glass's Dark Spaces Part 1, Stratton Dreams Book 1, Desolation's Tears Read by the author Interlude 1 Mediator Dominance Once the human species discovered the seven layers of the strata, only to encounter themselves as the inhabitants. Each distinct Stratton populace subtly different in a myriad of physical characteristics. DNA confirmed they were all one genus homo, united by a common humanity. What followed? War, obviously, as such is what human beings have always done whenever one people possessed resources desired by another. It would take several hundred years before the first unity was established, then enforced under the religious tyranny of the Adonai. The Grand Directive followed, breaking the stranglehold of those techno-pietists over the commerce and governance of the strata. The union of the combined federations was but the latest unifying authority in the over 3,000 year history since humanity took those first tentative steps of faith that embraced the transcendent mystery of the strata. Translating down from the upper reaches of the greater electromagnetic spectrum, Mediator Dominance was currently transitioning the vibrational frequency of its matter between the strata of Mercuria and Olympia, en route to the Stratton capital on planet Haldoroth in the Prime. Haldoroth didn't really govern the strata, but it was where the Executorium and its board of executors went through the motions that they did. But the great halls of the Executorium no more ran the Stratton show than did the Confed Home Office, located in the vast complex that stood right next to it. Both were facades to give the populace something to distract them to rail against, to draw attention away from the Takt family who controlled the military. Without the power of the armed forces to impose its edicts, Comfed was just another impotent ideal. With the support of the Takts, it served as a civilized veneer covering for the next in the long line of historic authoritarian tyrannies. Comfed couldn't have battleships and soldiers, as such were considered bad branding for a corporate entity. Instead, the status quo was maintained by a fleet of mediators and the ground forces of flash guards, dispatched in an instant, like lightning, to reconcile any conflict in favor of the greater good. Yet having one mediator rechristened by its true commanding officer with the name Dominance felt like an arrogant in-joke rubbed in the faces of those under the cannons of its diplomacy. Subordinate Captain Elliston Ashlock sat in the command chair of the vast cathedral-like bridge of dominance. Nothing employed by Comfed was built for efficiency alone, but as an elaborate spectacle designed to distract. Not only those on the outside who were to be intimidated by the extravagant excess, but even more so, those on the inside. So they might feel they were part of something far larger and more important than themselves. Elliston no longer bought into any of it. The shafts of light that filled the vacant space above him, simulating sunlight, 
were no more real than his own authority. Captain Ashlock filled a seat and did what he was told. These past few years in service, he'd felt little more than a glorified courier. Communication soon arrived from Elliston's superior officer, at whose beck and call his own life and those of his ship and crew had been reallocated. There on the command halo, the main monitor that encircled the bridge 360 degrees and 10 meters high, the visage of Captain Major Tucked replicated itself around the monitor ring, superseding whatever imagery had preceded it, so that nowhere on the bridge contained an excuse for missing his message. The Tucked family dynasty was the closest thing Comfed had to royalty. Relative commoners who rose to prominence amidst the founding years of the Grand Directive, becoming rising stars within the fledgling Directive military. The last 200 years saw them achieve a nearly isolated cell within the larger martial body. They'd supported the Kogue uprising, only to then abandon the cause, and were forced to flee Stratton society branded as traitors to the Adonai Authority. Yet the Adonai ultimately imploded, collapsing the formal directive with them. With the strata fractured into competing independent worlds and loose confederations, the Tarkts returned in power to help consolidate the chaos into the order of the combined federations. Now, three generations of Tarkts had guided the strata from behind the Comfed curtain. The youngest and heir apparent now called his subordinate lapdog to heel. Elliston, the Captain Major addressed him, ignoring the formality of his rank as if asking a close friend to perform him a favor. This Tarkt was at least ten years younger than his rank might suggest, with an Olympian's face of thirty-five years that looked little more than twenty. With his angular jawline, bright blue eyes, and perfectly close-cropped blonde hair, he was considered extraordinarily handsome, save for one defect, possibly the result of his upbringing. His eyes were deadly cold while masking a rage no one dared trigger. The Captain Major was now diverting dominance from its previously scheduled rendezvous to pick him up on Haldorath, dispatching his mediator to the Golian Stratum world of desolation to assess the reported situation there and restore order. Such a trip would require a Stratton Standard Week to translate and travel the distance. But the Captain Major wanted them there in less than three days. A seasonal storm was imminent that would shut down access for five months to the specific hemisphere that required their attention. This Tarkt wanted a designation of Mission Accomplished before the first flurries of the devastating seasonal blizzard blew in. He was ordering free fall. Captain Ashlock's stomach dropped. In addition, the Captain Major required his subordinate to communicate directly with Desolation Central to requisition from the planetary biologist all materials pertaining to Kakor and apprehend Comfed murder suspect Talitha Masters AF-6134025. Elliston didn't know what any of the specific words or designations meant, but he'd collect all things Kakor 
and issue the apprehension order for AF-613425 as instructed. As Takt signed off, Elliston couldn't hide his frustration, but he'd learned through personal experience that whatever a Takt wanted, a Takt got. While rank definitely provided many privileges the average Comfed citizen was denied, Captain Elliston Ashlock had only recently learned that being the son of the Executorium's High Secretariat, Sedgwell Ashlock, offered no true benefits at all. Their orders relayed, the crew of Mediator Dominance began preparations for freefall. They would complete their current translation and then drop the rest of the way. Whatever chaos was stewing on desolation would just have to manage itself until their arrival. This has been Brian J.L. Glass's Dark Spaces, Book One. Desolation's Tears, read by the author. Audio and video production by A.J. Blackburn. Original music composed and performed by Frankie Caffrey. Brian J.L. Glass's Dark Spaces and B.J.L.G.'s Dark Spaces are copyright 2022 by Brian J.L. Glass.